took the moon. Is that reverb there on the voice? It doesn't sound like it. How much did it come? Okay. Bonsoir et bienvenue au Réservoir à Paris pour une nouvelle édition de Music Planet Tonight. Bon, ce soir, c'est le dernier enregistrement qu'on fait pour cette émission qui dure déjà depuis deux ans. Et enfin, ce soir, on réalise notre rêve. Ladies and gentlemen, je suis tout simplement heureux, je suis ému, je suis fier de vous annoncer l'arrivée tout de suite ici au Réservoir sur Arte, en version réduite et acoustique. The one, the only... Radio Head.
song is called There There. Merci tout le monde. Oh,
Les cinq membres de Radiohead se sont rencontrés à l'école. Personne, surtout pas eux, ne savait qu'en six albums et douze années d'existence, ils allaient bouleverser le paysage rock et devenir un des groupes les plus importants au monde. Tout au long de leur carrière, la notion de risque a toujours été présente. Chaque album étant différent du précédent, la seule constante restant la voix bouleversante de Tom York. Le dernier CD, Hail to the Thief, offre une synthèse entre le rock électrique et le travail des machines. Radiohead continue de réinventer le rock. Don't say I didn't want you. Tom and Ed, welcome to Paris. Merci. And thank you so much for coming, firstly. So, tonight, 
only Tom and Johnny will be on stage. So w why? Too much gear. Ah. Much too much gear. Yeah. Too complicated. So what was your spirit when you went in to record the new stuff? It was good. I mean, we, the whole thing was to try and keep it quick, you know. Do it quickly, don't think about it too much, and, um, you know, just do what we've been doing live and, and in the same spirit, and that's what we did, which was, which was new for us, obviously. <laughs> we had a laugh. Yeah. And for the first time, you went to Los Angeles, at Los Nigel's Angeles. insistence. Yeah. What, what did you first say when you said, let's go to L.A., boys? Okay. We said, okay, we'll have to work on that. How much is it going to cost? And... I mean, the studio was great, so I was kind of sold on it, but... It was the, it was the Oceanway studio, wasn't yeah, it? The Beach Boys. It was lovely. Yeah. But after, after Kid A and Amnesiac, was there a band decision to do something different, to come back with the more direct, perhaps shorter songs, rockier? Was there, was there a definite feeling that we should do something new? Well, no, it was, it was more like, let's carry on where we're, where we're at. I mean, I guess it was more direct because we, we assembled it faster and we're using a different method, but it wasn't like, let's make a more direct record, I don't think. But it was, it was more to do with making a record about capturing a performance, not like endless um, editing and re-editing and, 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 and stuff. So it was very much like a spawn capturing a moment, which is, I guess, more pop, maybe. don't know. And the songs are back to, like, uh, something when I was young, and the punk ethic of... Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> when I was younger, you know, we used to have those three-and-a-half-minute pop tunes. Yeah. Well, I, I had a thing about that. <laughs> I had a thing about that when Darryl. we... Daryl? <laughs> Daryl? You'd go into, uh, you know, after, after doing the take, and you'd, you'd run into the control room, and I'd shout to the engineer, how long's that, Daryl? And he'd say, five minutes 60. Uh, five minutes 50. Oh, OK, let's cut out two minutes. Because we're trying to do everything short. I went, I went back and, and, and realised all the Beatles records were really, all the songs were really short, which was something of a surprise. You know, Happiness is a Warm Gun is, I think, just over three minutes. Is it? Which is scary, because it feels like it's about ten. Yeah, it feels like an epic. Yeah. Why Hail to the Thief? I need to ask it, because well, I know there's a book about Bush and the way that he stole the election and Michael Moore's there's been talking. There's many books, Yes. Shit. And you could also be about the internet, I guess. Yep. And there's also a theme that you talk about um, people possessing other people's souls to, yeah. to control them. Yeah. Is it all of those things? Or yeah, I mean, it's, I, li I like this. I like the, the, I like the last one because uh, it's just, this is an idea that Dante had. That's my literary reference for the week. That's good. Thank you. Uh, that, that certain people, um, they do things that are so bad they're still alive, but their their souls have already gone, so they're sort of essentially possessed. I, th I I think I don't know about you, but I've actually met people like that. You you meet them in in this business. Whoa. Yes. Yeah, and it comes real quick open up your hand, and um, so that's th at the moment. Hell to the thief is about that for me. I'm really into that idea. It's much more about that than the bush thing, because it's sort of it's everywhere, and everybody says it, and everybody. I mean, you walk around New York, and every other block in New York has got someone who's called fuck bush on the wall. It's not like, you know, we're on our own or anything. Yeah. <laughs> particularly consensual. Oh.
Now, a recurring theme, and it comes on on Hail to the Thief as well, is sort of the, you speak out, but you also have a bit of the ostrich thing about, I'll sort of bury my head until it passes by. Is that a fair comment? I think the record is a conflict between being incredibly angry and being so tired, you just, you, wanna, you want to give up. You want to give up even thinking about it, because it's, totally it's totally out of your hands anyway, la, la, la. But that's the trick, you see, that's how they get you. That's when people stop participating in democracy, that's when fascism occurs. Absolutely. And that's when idiots get in charge. But do you really feel that you, you, you can't change anything, that you can't no, stand... No, I don't. No, I, I, I don't. But, but, but the record was very much in, involved with, with feeling that, yeah. Now, finally, um, you're hailed as one of the most important bands in the world. Does that phrase mean anything to you guys? I mean, when you win awards and things, I guess it must it's recompense for what you've done. Is it something you think about? Um, yeah, I think about it when I'm when I'm doing my son's nappies. <laughs> Son? I'm Son? A spokesman for I really generation. shouldn't be dealing with your shit right now. <laughs> I'm far too important. <laughs> and there's no, not been a greatest hits yet. Will there be? No. Can you envisage? No. Only when, when the band is over, need, that's the only time that a greatest hits is... When we need the money. <laughs> yeah, when we need the money. Yes. <laughs> no, when, it, when the band is over, because otherwise it's, it's terrible. I can't understand, like, greatest hits half... Because, you know, like Queen. Queen did their greatest hits, and the first one is impeccable, isn't yeah. it? It's absolutely genius. And then the rest was all rubbish after that. Well, it was, kind of, wasn't it? You can start a debate off in a minute. No, OK, it's not rubbish. It's not rubbish, but it's not Seven Seas of Rye. It's not, you know... That's, that's the old uh, the Ben syndrome, that is, man. 
What's that? We'll have exactly the same. Well, probably, but oh, it yeah, should but be at the end of the career. Everything after I was pants. No, 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 but we haven't done a great sits album, you see. It's, 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 once you do, it's like, it, there's, there's a trade-off there. There's a, there's a, yeah, there's yeah. a creative trade-off. Like but Blur did a greatest sits, and they've done a good record. But how so. are you going to do it if Tom doesn't ever listen to any of the old records? How are you going to choose? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to decide? We'll, we'll delegate. We'll delegate it. Delegate it. Yeah. I'll Someone do it. in the office. Yeah, exactly. Thanks Thank so much. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys.
Johnny Ray. Colin. Hello. Bonsoir. Hello. Bonsoir. And good evening and welcome to Paris. Thank you. Thank you very And thank much. you all for coming. Even though two of you sitting here tonight will not be appearing. Mm. You'll be at the bar, but not actually playing. Yes. And are you upset about that at all? It's good for us, though. We actually get to see um, a Radiohead show. Is that? We never get to see. That well, must not be from weird. Side, anyway. You don't get to see that, <laughs> do you? Yeah, I mean, it's something we tried in America in a radio station and found it to be fun and so we did another one and then we decided to do one in France as well it was just yeah it, it, it's just it's just easier for us to do and still fun and plus we get to uh, work at songs and and get different things out of them I suppose um, and and have that thing of not quite know what we're doing or how we're going to play the song far more which is a nice fear to have really so the Los Angeles experience was good, and it was Nigel who insisted you all went over there, I guess. And I think this time you worked much faster, rather than the compiling the album from a hard drive like before. We did, yeah. yeah. I mean, when, actually in Los Angeles itself, I mean, we were there for a fortnight, and we did a track a day, which is something we've never done, which is great because, you know, you, you're very unselfconscious about what you do. You don't have that chance to sit down and overanalyze everything. And it, everything just has this real momentum. I think that comes across in the performances. Tell me a little bit about, uh, if you will, about Radiohead.tv. I mean, what's, what's it going to be, and can I have a job? Oh, yeah. Can I have a job on it? Sure. What, what's it going to well, be? Yeah, we're, we're very non-discriminating about quality output. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but that's kind of part of what it's about, is it's trying to sort of compile lots of things that are being sent to us by, like, uh, students, fans, artists, whatever, and trying to get away from, like, just to have something... To try and put the spontaneous and the throwaway back into something, sort of the visual and the music thing, and get away from the sort of formulaic and programmed and staid and uh, commercially couched on either side by adverts or whatever, and, and, and super expensive, which means you have to second guess everything you're doing if you're dealing with like quarter of a million pounds to just put something on the screen, which is obscene. You know, you spend more money doing something for one song than costs to do an entire record, which is what our business should really be about. Now, you guys have known each other for such a long time, and you're all still, I presume, and this is a good, you know, you're good actors, that you're all still mates. Is there a secret recipe? I mean, mates fall out, especially bands who live in each other's pockets. Is there something that you're aware of that you do do or you don't do so that it does stay happy? I don't think we ever really fell out, actually. 
I think, you know, I think there are points where we became rather more distant from each other. But, I mean, actually going through the whole process of, of recording Kid A, I think we actually we started, we started talking to each other once again. And that's key to that, really, just being open with each other. And uh, I think we're quite respectful of each other's musicality and, and ideas. So I think, you know, that's, that's a good basis. Now that there are dads in the band, does that change things that you you can't go on the road for two years now and live in hotels? Does that does it change things? Well, the later show starts with it galling. <laughs> <laughs> now I asked the other boys the last question: if you can ever envisage a best of Radiohead coming out one day, they didn't think it was a good idea. They're like a four-track EP <laughs> with like <laughs> a third, fourth-track yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Modest. With nobody does it better on possibly. Um, yeah. Yes, I remember that. So, um, best of, I don't know. Tom always wanted to call one of our records the best driving music in the world ever. So maybe, you know, maybe we should do that instead. We'll see. It's been done, hasn't it? I Probably think it has. has. Yeah. <laughs> don't tell him it was a good idea. <laughs> All the good ideas have been taken well, down you until go. you come up with another one. Thanks very much for joining us. I just have to say, like, it's a magic. It's a magical experience for us to have you here and to see what you're doing tonight. And I feel like a tiny little 14-year-old boy again. So thank you for being here and giving us such pleasure. Sincerely. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray.
Disco. Yeah, it's disco. So far, this is disco.
Tom and Johnny. Pamela, et ce soir, nous sommes bien entourés. Ladies and gentlemen, Air, Pet Shop Boys, Archive, Dread Zone. Est-ce que vous voulez encore? Ah! Je crois qu'ils veulent encore. OK. Turn me on. Ouais, euh... Ouais, ouais, euh... Ouais, euh...
do a song uh, this is a song called fog and we did this uh, we did a version of this and uh, it wasn't very good so this is a better version of it unless I cock it up in which case it's not Good night, everybody. Thank you. Tom and Johnny, can we have some more, please? We're hungry. Yes! Okay. Oh no, this is Paris. Oh, no. uh, this is um, called uh, Karma, please.
Merci. Bonsoir tout le monde. Radiohead, Music Planet tonight. Pour moi, c'était un grand moment de la vie. Je l'espère pour vous aussi. Et pour la toute dernière fois, mesdames, messieurs, pour la toute dernière fois, the last time, thank you for watching, et merci d'être avec nous. Au revoir du réservoir.